Hey everyone, Keegan here with Dark Arrow. I'm standing in front of our new CNC machine. Not only is it new to us, it's also new to Tormach. So this is their 1500MX, and this is actually serial number one. Really excited to have the very first unit in our shop and starting to test it out and kind of see what it's capable of. I wanna get into the capabilities of this machine and actually show you it making some parts. But before we do that, I wanna back up a little bit. If you're new to the channel, uh, welcome. Again, my name is Keegan. What we're doing here at Dark Arrows, we're designing a new kit aircraft. It's designed specifically for speed, range, and efficiency, and we're getting through the development of the very first unit. We're getting ready to transition from uh, the prototyping stage into production, and in parallel to that, we're also getting into flight testing activities. The aircraft itself is made out of mostly composite materials, but there are a lot of metal machine components that go into it as well. Some of the engine mount components and a lot of the nose gear and main gear components are machined out of metal. We started out with the PCNC 1100, which is great for prototyping. We made nearly all of the machine components for the aircraft with that machine. This machine is a lot more capable than the one we had before. I'll just talk through high level some of the specs that it has going on. The spindle is capable of going up to 10,000 RPM. The rapids for the X and Y is 12,000 inches per minute, and then the Z is 600 inches per minute. A lot more material removal rate than we had on our previous machine. So again, a lot better setup for our production environment. I believe this is the biggest machining envelope that Tormach has offered as well. What that means is that you have more travel or more distance in the Z, X, and Y to make larger parts. So I have just a six inch vise set up here right now, but there's enough room to put like a fourth axis on here and maintain your vise or to put a vacuum table if you have thinner parts that you need to, to make. Some of the capabilities that it has that uh, you haven't seen before in other Tormach machines is that it has through spin spindle coolant, which means the coolant comes out of the spindle head and can actually go through the tools. I don't have any tools at the moment that can do through spindle coolant, but I can show you what that looks like. It's actually pretty impressive. Uh, they have a touch screen right here, and this is vertically oriented. I didn't have the touch screen before, and I thought that it would get really dirty and messy, but it's actually really nice and really intuitive to use. TSC stands for through spindle coolant. You can activate it at any moment. It's pretty intense. I'm looking forward to taking advantage of that feature once we get into actually creating some of the components for Dark Arrow 1 production units on this machine. It also has a washdown feature. Again, that's just a button on the screen. What that does is it takes all the chips that were generated during the machining process, drops them down into the tray here and funnels them down behind the machine where there's a chip collection unit in the back of the machine. Our previous unit, they collected in the base of the machine, and then you kind of had to clean them out by hand. So huge upgrade from what we had before. Really excited about that feature. Maybe enough talk for now. You probably just want to see it operating. Let's make one of the components that are actually going to be used on the aircraft. We're actually doing some design tweaks to our main landing gear retract mechanism. We learned a lot from our initial retract tests and we decided to make some changes there to improve it a little bit before we get into flight testing. So the component that I'm gonna be making is a gear carrier that goes in the gearbox. So there's a gear box system that drives the gear up and down. I'm gonna show one of the components that we're gonna be making there. I have the program all set up, ready to go. I've already machined out several of these just to test its repeatability. This is after op one, what you're seeing is uh, a partially complete component. So what we want to do here to finish this one off, I have to rotate it over. We're going to clean off this material and then we also have a countersinking operation that we're going to do for it. Let me get this loaded into our soft gels. I'll show the probing operation and then we'll hit go on the screen and, and get this component made. We did not have this before either, but the jog pendant is really nice as well. I find myself using it more frequently, like when I'm trying to kind of roughly position the automatic prober. I'm just gonna pull it up on the screen here and get that going. So it's gonna go through its probing operation and grab the uh, center of this part. And that's gonna set our X and Y offset again to zero to the 
center of this. Ready to hit go on this, I'm just gonna hit cycle start. You can do that from the touch screen or you can just hit the button right here. Parts all finished up. Let's take a quick look, see how it turned out. I have my two carrier halves here. These are our gears. I'm gonna drop them in. This was the half that I machined earlier. So no surprises there. I'd already confirmed that this one works, but here's our part that we just machined out that drops in like this, that makes our completed gear carrier. So from here we take dimensions of everything that is critical to this individual part. Anytime you have parts that go into a gearbox, there's obviously tight tolerances and things like that. We've made a couple of these already, so I already kind of know where this part lands, but it's always good to collect more data. One of the things that I realized using this machine that I didn't have in the other unit that we had is that I spent a lot of time not actually machining. I spent a lot of time doing setup and cleanup. I'm not really doing that anymore with this and it's better suited for that production style environment. It's more set it and forget it, if you will. We went with the automatic probing device on this machine, which allows us to basically get our offsets in a very quick manner. Before I was doing that manually and it was very time consuming and it was very error prone. So another nice feature of this machine. Let's take a quick look in the machine. Uh, one of the other nice things about it are the bellows or the way covers for Y. These are all metal. Previously what we had was rubber and it the chips just kind of like, I don't want to say melt off of there, but they just fall right off. There's virtually at least for the parts that we've been making so far, there's really not any cleanup with the wash down and with the way that the bed is designed, all the chips kind of funnel into the back of the machine. This has a ATC, which is short for an automatic tool changer. It has this carousel over on the left. Uh, we've already loaded in some tools. I've just loaded in some that are specific to machining this component. We didn't have that previously and I didn't realize how much of a time saver that was, but a lot of things have been packaged together in a very nice way that allows you to upload your program, hit go, and then kind of walk away and get other things done. You don't have to worry about chip evacuation. You don't have to worry about changing out your tools. And then you don't really have to think too much about your setup process. Another thing I didn't mention, it has a built-in camera and the camera will record any type of e-stop event. It'll go 30 seconds back in time and you have the ability to watch the crash that occurred and find out kind of what went wrong and to diagnose that problem. One other thing that I thought is really cool to share is finding the tool offset. We can do that from the screen. I'm gonna come back over here. Previously, this was a very manual process, finding the offset or the height of your tool. I have this all built in, again, a lot more automated. We can get the tool height here for the tool that we currently have in. I don't really have to do anything on my end. Really slick. So with this process, you can get the height offset of your tools. You can get really fancy with it and you can get it to do height offset checks periodically throughout the program if you're running a batch of parts to make sure that you didn't have like a tap break or a drill break throughout the middle of the program. Really excited about the initial results of this machine. It's already shown a high level of automation for us based on what we had before. There was a lot of time that was spent uh, just with setup and with cleanup. A lot of that's completely eliminated now with this machine. I shouldn't say completely, but very heavily offloaded now on the machine side. So really excited about that. We have a lot more parts that we're planning to create kind of in the background to finishing up stuff with the prototype. I'm sure there's more content that we'll share there, but thank you guys for watching and thank you for checking out just the initial trial runs of this machine and we'll catch you in the next one.